Alright guys, welcome to my own YouTube series that I'm creating called Every Minor Nation in Hoi 4 A to Z Country Guides. Let's go. So, as you can see here, test game. Basically, in this series, the plan is that I'm going to play every single country in Hearts of Iron 4 from A to Z. Starting with Afghanistan, ending with, I think, Yunnan, last country, so it doesn't really go to Z. But the first country that we are going to be playing is Afghanistan. So, I think that it is time that we begin. Now, there are a few rules to this series. First things first, we have to be in Iron Man mode and historical AI focuses. We are going to be any country, minor nations that have a focus tree, we are going to be going down their historical path. And... Or, well, actually, you know what? MIP is the thing is, is that... I don't know. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be doing things, like, historically. So the whole point is this is Minor Nations Guide Historical. And for any countries that have a focus tree, that the people that, like, you guys, the commenters and the subscribers and the viewers, if you guys want me to play the other parts of the focus tree for each of these nations, then by all means, comment and like, and there'll probably be like goals at some point, but the first two nations, Afghanistan and Albania, I'm pretty sure, they have generic focus trees. All right, so let's make sure that all of my game rules are fixed. Uh, war goals, guarantee independence, revoke guarantees, yep, everything is good. We are on regular difficulty, Iron Man mode, historical AI focuses, let's begin. We are, uh, we're going to call this YouTube Afghanistan. We're going to save and play. All right, so just going to wait for the game to initialize. And then we are going to begin as soon as the game loads. Which, at the rate we're going, is going to be never. <laughs> Alright, so, Afghanistan. Let's take a little look at the country. We start off with nine divisions. We have two templates the Royal Guard, which is 20 width, which is good, but it sucks. We also have Militia, 12 width. Horses and infantry combined also suck, so we're gonna have to fix those. Then, if we go to our resources, we only have a bit of tungsten and no steel. It's very not good. We have a generic focus tray. We have one civilian factor, as you can see here. And we have two research slots. So we're not in the best position. However, we do have a few um, positives as Afghanistan. The first thing is that when you go to assign your general, which you can do by clicking this button here, we have an amazing general that's a level 4 Desert Fox 5 attack. And he's got pretty good lo supply consumption, logistics score. Which is good since we're fighting in mainly deserts and mountains and hills. Also, we start off with a few cool military staff members. We have a 10% army defense expert. And we also have an infantry genius. And an infantry genius is pretty good. Also... We have a few cool political advisors. We have a Prince of Terror, which is pretty nice considering that we are going to be conquering land and we're going to want as much manpower as possible because if you look at Afghanistan, we only have like six million people in our country. Also, another thing is that we are already 15% towards fascism and 10% towards communism, which means that we can do some cheeky shenanigans throughout this game. Alright, first things first, we want to build a military factory in Kabul. Next, we want to go and see what our infrastructure is through the industrial effort focuses. So we get three in Herat and three in Herat, which sucks. 
So we've gotten a really bad run through here. Because as you can see, under if you hover over this, you know, you can see where the um what state it's going to be in. We want all of our infrastructure to be in our capital. Because the more infrastructure you have in your capital means the more supply you're going to have for all of your troops. Also, another thing is since we're going to be doing most of our building in Kabul, we want to have as much infrastructure in there as possible, because the higher the infrastructure, the faster things build up. However, we can work around this. So first we're going to do political effort, we are going to research artillery, and we are going to research electronic mechanical engineering. We are going to delete all of our divisions, except for one. And we are going to train this single division. I think that we can now play. So I'm just going to um, play through for a little bit here. And I will... Do I want to cut here? That is the question. I think that we're going to stay back. I want to show you guys sort of what the first bit is. Because at the beginning here... It's really a, like, I really want to show you everything that's going on. So, I'm going to explain to you my strategies, Afghanistan. So, we're going to be going fascist for manpower, because through the uh, basic focus tree, you get manpower through militarism, military youth. Actually, militarism is a pretty good focus. It gives you army experience, 5% recruitable population, and damage to garrisons minus 10%, which are all amazing things. Also, another thing is, so we are going to be going fascist. We're going to be getting our political visors. But also, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a military theorist. And I'm going to explain why in a little bit. But it's all going to make sense. Because we want to get land doctrines. Because we are going to be building artillery. And we are going to be utilizing this Ford Tungsten that we have right here. Alright, so the plan is that we are going to do political effort, and once that is complete, we will hit, you can hit the space bar to pause the game, so we're going to pause the game, so that we don't waste any time. We're going to do collectivist ethos, and we are going to get ourselves a mil- Whoops. Alright. I meant to I meant to actually get a fascist demagogue, but you know what? Having a military theorist is okay. We'll just get the fascist demagogue when we get our next amount of political power. So the plan is that I will uh, just continue along this path of doing the collectivist ethos, and I will be back to you once that is complete. Alright, so, I am, uh, back, because I just wanted to show you guys one thing that I'm going to do. So, after we have researched artillery, we are going to research weapons one. That is the next round of research that we are going to be doing. Now, I'm going to stick with you until we get done with Collectivist Ethos, and then... We will see where we go. Also, another thing that we can do in the meantime is we are going to promote this guy to a field marshal. And he is going to be our field marshal. We are going to give him offensive doctrine. And I'll explain why in a little bit. And we are also going to give him organization first and charismatic. Now, we have done collectivist ethos. We can do nationalism focus so we can start going fascist. And I'll be right back with you after we have completed nationalism focus all right I am back so we have completed nationalism focus while you were I was gone I also got Abdul Majid he is our fascist demagogue we have now 16 army experience, which also while you were gone, I put, I changed out the tank for an infantry division in the Royal Guard, and we are going to use that 16 army experience to build our division. We're going to remove that, remove that, 
and change these over to infantry. This is going to be our front line division. Save that. But we do not want to start training it yet. The reason is because whenever you train a division, that decreases the amount of army experience. And the... And the... What is it called? And when you train a small amount of divisions, like training as in I'm training one division right here, and you get the most army experience, it's the most efficient. You also want to be training your largest division, that's why I'm training the Royal Guard. Now also, the Spanish Civil War has fired, which is going to be a recurring theme throughout all of these videos, so get ready for that. And we are also going to recruit a general. Ooh, that's pretty good, and flexible strategist, and I will be explaining why in a bit. Now. The next focus we're going to do is not militarism. We are going to be doing industrial effort, and we are going to be going down the route of armament effort. The reason is because whenever you build military factories, that means that you're spending more time of the game building guns. Now, the more time that you're spending building guns means the more time that you're going to have the more guns that you're going to have for the game, which is crucial. You want as many guns as possible because you have low production efficiency, and a small amount of factories in Afghanistan. Also, recruitable population, you gain that every month automatically, and you gain it at a faster rate than you can build guns. So you want to build as many guns as possible, and as soon and as fast as possible, when you are a minor nation with a weak industry like Afghanistan. So I will be right back with you after we finish our next focus. Alright, I am uh, coming back to you because I just finished researching infantry equipment and I wanted to show you what the next bit of research is after we finish weapons 1. So we have researched artillery, we have researched guns, but what we're going to do is we're going to use one research slot for arms and military and stuff and the other research slot for industry. So what we're going to do now with this research slot is you have a couple of options. You can either do support weapons one, which is not a bad choice. You can get the next bit of artillery, which is good, because plus 10 soft attack is pretty good. Or what you can do is you can get your next superior firepower. Or your first superior firepower, I should say, because that's the doctrine that we are going to be doing as Afghanistan, because we are doing a uh, line artillery focus. So the plan is that I think I'm probably going to do the superior firepower. It only takes 162 days for the first time. And we want to start our doctrines and finish our doctrines as soon as possible. Doctrines make or break your units. Also, I'm just going to line up the artillery for the production queue. All right, I'll be uh, back once we've finished industrial effort. Alright, so we have finished industrial effort, we are going to be doing armament effort now. Also, we finished another round of research, we finished researching mechanical computing, now we will begin researching basic machine tools. We have gained some army experience, but we still have a little bit to go until our next thing, and we now have 26% fascist support, and we have enough political power to open up the political discourse. We do not need to expand civil support, that just decreases stability, and we want as much stability as possible. Because stability means more political power production, as you can see by the plus 1% stability modifier. Alright, I will come back to you with the next update shortly. All right, we have finished our next focus and we have also gotten the anti common turn pact thing pop up. Now, it doesn't matter really if you join or refuse because we're not going to join the fa the, uh, the, uh, the Axis. You could refuse, we might join the Soviets depending on what you want to do, but I'll explain that later. So normally I just refuse because, you know, it doesn't really matter but you can do whatever you want. So we've done armament effort, we're going to now do armament effort too. Also, another thing, 
We are now building artillery. I have edited this division to replace three of the cavalry with three infantry. And we got an event called Fascist Assault Divisions, which gives us recruitable population. It decreases stability, but it increases daily fascism support, which is pretty useful in this game. Also, another thing is we have 100 political power, so we can discredit the government, which is fairly useful. But we would like to stay above 50% stability if possible, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. But every little bit helps. Alright, so I will come back to you either when we have enough army experience to do anything, research finishes, or armament effort finishes. Alright, so we have finished basic machine tools. Now we are going to go for dispersed industry. We are also going to just sit here and wait a little bit because superior firepower is about to end. And we do not have enough army experience to do anything of note yet. We are going to now sit here and just wait for things to produce. We do not want to trade for any steel yet. Oh, superior firepower is over. So you have a couple options now. You can either go for the next superior firepower doctrine, you can go for into artillery, or you can go for support weapons. I would suggest probably going for the into artillery, then going for support weapons, and then doing your next doctrine. Uh, you don't need airplanes yet, and this stuff we're going to work on with the other tech tray. So I will be back when we have enough army experience, or this finishes, to do the next infantry template. Okay, so now we have finished armament effort, and we have enough army XP to finish making our division. So first things first, armament effort three. We go to recruit and deploy. We go to royal guard, and here's where it gets interesting. So we're going to add an infantry, Remove all of this cavalry and this infantry. And we are going to add two artilleries. This is going to be the division we use. It has 20 combat width, 96.2 soft attack, 11 hard attack, 46.6 organization, and it's pretty good. It only uses 8,000 manpower because artillery does not take up as much manpower as infantry does, and the amount of infantry will also be decreasing. We have relatively good breakthrough for an infantry division, and even though we don't have the best defense, that is not what is important here. So we're going to save that division. Also, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to modify it so this division only has default, you know, priority, because we don't want this division to be getting um, equipment at any faster rate than our small little baby division. Now, we can stop training this guy. We're going to build, put a fallback line for these guys right here. We are going to train up 15 of these divisions, and we're going to train up two of these divisions. Make sure you set the amount to be one for both of these. Set the locations over here in Hurrah, and we can now continue the game. Okay, so I just got a message that I accidentally already clicked off of. But basically, it was called the Threat of Communism, which gives you a bunch of fascist support. So if we go back here, we are now 57.98% fascist, which is pretty good. Because what we can do is we can go over here, we can click National Referendum. We lose 5 stability, which isn't good, because now we're only at 43. But we are now fascist. We will now wait a few days. Do -do 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 and... We will begin justifying a war goal on Iran. I know, what a twist. Also, the other thing I forgot to mention is you can recreate the Persian Empire as Afghanistan. And it is quite difficult because you have to take over allied territory, including the island of Cyprus, which can be quite difficult. But that is, uh, but I, di uh, ugh. I digress. All right, I'll be right back in a jiffy. Alright, so we have now finished our next research. We have finished Dispersed Industry, so we're going to go for Construction 1.
Alright, we have now also finished Armament Effort 3, which means now we will be rushing the extra research slot. So that we can get, obviously, another research slot and a bunch of civilian factories so that we can actually trade for things. I know, what a shock, right? Also, another thing that I forgot to mention is military theorists give you army experience, but they also increase the speed at which you research land doctrines, which is quite useful. Another thing is that once you turn fascist, once you get 150 political power, you can also go to war economy, which is wonderful. So we're going to be going for that. Also, but before we go for war economy, we want to get the infantry genius, because this guy is crucial to us winning the war with Iran, which you will be seeing hopefully shortly. But if you have made it this far through the video, I would like to ask you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, because, you know, this is the thing that YouTubers do. And um, it just helps the channel grow, and we're trying to get, you know, to the next subscriber goal, which hasn't really been set. But, you know, it's there in the air. All YouTubers do it. You know what I mean. Um, but I hope that you are enjoying this content, and I would like you to, you know, if you do like this, I would like you to leave a comment, maybe give suggestions for how I could jazz this up. But I will be back with you once we have a new update. We have finished into our artillery. So, as I said earlier, we are going to go support Weapons 1. We have also had our first eight infantry divisions complete, so we are going to assign them to a new general. Make a new commander. Oh, cavalry expert. Doesn't matter. Um, we are going to make a fallback line right here, and we are going to assign all of these divisions to that fallback line. Now, this is going to give me a moment to explain why we have put our fallback line here, and we haven't just made a front line here. Well, the first reason is because this tile here tends to get attacked easily, and destroyed easily, because it is a desert, which means there is no hindrance to attack, and the Iranians can attack us from three spots on this tile. Now, there are two mountain tiles right here, and three desert tiles right here. That is why we put our three best divisions on these three tiles, and we don't need as many divisions, because mountain tiles, as you can see here, only have 40% attack, which is pretty good. So I will come back to you once there is the next update. Alright, we've had a few things happen. Japan has declared war on China, and we have finished construction effort. Construction effort 2. Let's go. Also, more divisions training, building more stuff and things. You know, same old, same old. Also, we now have a factory, which means that we are going to trade for steel. Now, a beautiful thing about Afghanistan with this, you know, setup is that we need exactly eight steel, which is the amount of steel that you get for one civilian factory. We're going to trade with France because it means that we don't need any convoys. And we will say, sure thing, we will use all factories for trade so we can build as much stuff as possible. As you can see, we're getting 100% construction efficiency. So, we now have 150 political power, which means that we can get our next, uh, person in the government. Now, normally, I would go for the infantry genius, but because we are doing things a little bit quicker than normally, and we only have about 100, no, not even, 90 days until the justification on Afghanistan finishes, we are going to go war economy, so that we can build as many guns and stuff as possible. Okay, we have finished construction effort number one, so we are now going to do dispersed industry two. We have now completed support equipment one, so we are going to do to delay for superior firepower, so number two, superior firepower. We have almost finished our next divisions, and we have about finished producing artillery in just 24 days. So once we are done producing artillery, I'm going to- Oh, actually, we have just finished construction effort too. So now we're going to do infrastructure effort. Alright, I'll be right back once we have finished our next round of cool events and things. Alright, so we have finished producing artillery, almost. You're almost there, I'm just going to stick around with you guys while we finish the last few pieces of artillery, because I'm then going to show you what is about to happen, because we need guns 
badly. As you can probably tell. Alright. Take off that one artillery. Move it down. And, but we're not going to delete the artillery because we want to keep our production efficiency. Now, if you see here, we still have 278 days until we finish infantry equipment, which is very, very not good. And there's not much we can do about that. It appears that we are going just a wee bit too fast with the Iran justification, but we will try and drag it out as much as possible. So I'm also going to move this guy I don't know how to do that though, so he's just gonna have to stay down here. But I'll be back with the next round of things. Alright, we have finished our justification for Coruscant. However, we're not going to declare the war yet. Because, well, obviously we don't have enough divisions in the field. Now one thing that we can do to alleviate this is we can auto-deploy divisions by clicking this button here. Also, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the highest priority for reinforcing divisions that are in the field. Now, our war goal expires on the 14th of January, 1938, so we're going to wait until the 13th of January, 1938, to declare a war, to give ourselves as much time as possible. Alright, we have now finished infrastructure effort. So we're doing infrastructure effort number two, and we're just waiting for the rest of our divisions to train. Okay, it is now the 13th of January. I have deployed divisions uh, beforehand so that I have as many divisions as possible in the field. We almost have enough political power to get this guy, and we are going to declare the war. Here we go. Now, we're going to let Iran advance upon us, and we're going to let them take Herat, which is the actual name of this city right here. Never been, probably will never be, because Afghanistan's sort of a war zone, if nobody has noticed. And we are going to make front lines, because we have no need for those fallback lines now. Delete these. And good. So we can see by going to click on the We Are At War button, Afghanistan has about the same manpower as us, and we're going to now get the Infantry Genius. Now one of the hopes is that Afghanistan will just cycle charge on us, but it appears that they are not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw like front lines and stuff here. We're just gonna sit and we're gonna wait and see what they do. See if they do anything, actually. Hopefully they do something. But, um, oh, we finished infrastructure for two, so we're gonna get extra research slot. We're going to wait for our final, you know, things to finish getting built. We're going to now do construction effort two. And I'll be right back when something happens. Hopefully something happens. Okay, I'm back. Nothing has happened except that we got another research slot. Now, one thing that I forgot to also show you guys is that in the division training map mode, you can actually assign divisions where to, like, place them. So you can place them... If you click this little button right here that I'm hovering on, you then get the this little green icon, and you can click the front line or the commander that you want the divisions assigned to. So I want the... Oh, and you left-click. So I want these remaining two divisions to be assigned to the orange front line. Now, our next focus after extra research slot is going to be construction effort three. Our, with this re next research slot, we are also going to be training support weapons or infantry weapons. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to do an improved infantry equipment. And the plan is that, because I was just looking, and I think that this is because I'm doing this faster than in my test games, even though it appears as if Iran is beating us, it's an 18... 18... wait, 18% 18 in favor of the defenders. Oh no, yeah, because Iran's the defender. And because they, I think, have less men in the field than me, they don't want to attack me. So, my plan is that once I finish training all my divisions and I have full support in the field, 
I might do a push. But before we do that, I'm gonna see if I can take all of these divisions here and take back Herat. So let's see if this works. So we can click on this and see what is going on. Oh, it does appear that we are winning. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, we're losing. All right, so I'm gonna hold everyone. So that did not work, obviously. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wait for the remaining two divisions to go, and then we're going to do a cheeky push. I will be right back with that. All right, so we have finished construction effort three, and I was thinking about this because for some reason, this game's just not going the same as my test games. I'm very confused. We are going to go for militarism, and I think, like, I don't get why the Iranians aren't attacking. Like, they attacked me in every single one of my other games. I'm not sure if, if it's because they simply have less divisions than me. I'm quite confused. But, I don't know. We're almost done building the remaining guns that we need. So that we can fill out, finish building these two divisions here. And, like, I simply don't know. Like, I'm quite confused. And have no answers to the questions. Um, but, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Maybe what I'll do is I'll bunch up all of my, like, good divisions, like these ones. And what I'll do is I'm going to try and puncture one of the front lines. So, like, what I'm going to do is I'll make this smaller, and I'll have all, the all of the divisions go over there. We can railroad them by hitting B, right? Is it B? What is it? Yeah, it's B. I don't know. But they're there now. We are going to take all of these divisions, attack here, and we're going to take... Yeah, okay, so that did work. Now what we want to do is we want to look to see the animations on these two divisions. Alright, so, we're going to pause now. You can see here, one division is moving. So we're going to take these two divisions here, and we're going to pin them in Hurrah. Nobody's moving there, so that's good. We're going to take the remaining three of these divisions and leave them there. And now we have pushed. Just like that. We're going to take the blue front line. And attempt to move it. So it's just on that one little nub there. And we're going to hit H to hold everyone. There we go. And now we are... That. Just let all of the front lines reorganize. And there you go. Now, wait a second. I just noticed something. Before the front lines reorganize, because you see there's this little cheeky bugger right here, there's a hole in the front line. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two militia divisions, go there, take these three Royal Guards divisions, and we're going to go there. And we're going to take one and have him just go right there. We're going to take these two divisions, and when these Harati divisions start to move, we are going to pin them. So these divisions are moving. I'm just going to let this go. Uh-huh. And they have started moving, so now we pin them. Uh-oh. Alright. Uh, take that one, orange division. Try and... Yep, there we go. Alright. So, now we have made an encirclement. Also, another thing that we can do is we now have a height another 150 political power so we could do another army defense or we could do one of these but i think i'm gonna go prince of terror just so that as we're taking more land there won't be damage to factories and you know, all that fun stuff so now with these divisions these divisions once they're done being attacked oh we got delay so we're going to do our next research uh, we're gonna do this, because we want to get that research, because it's 1938 too, and we're going to take one, two, and three, and we're gonna have everyone attack in Harad, because we want to kill those encircled divisions. Everyone go, kill them. There we go, so we are now in the green, which is good. Now this is one of the most important things, as Afghanistan, is you want to get these encirclements, they're very important. Very important. Oh, improved infantry equipment, so we will now get support weapons. 
And, okay, cool. So we have now done st a thing. So we're gonna hold all you guys, reorganize the front lines by doing that. And we're going to let everyone railroad. So everyone moves faster. Because we want everyone to move fast so we don't lose any terrain. Which would be bad. We still have 20,000 manpower. We have killed 27,000 of them and we have only lost 6,000. We now have more fielded manpower, we have more divisions, and we are now almost on par with them in factories. So, now is the time to strike. Has everyone prepared? And so those divisions are still preparing, but we're pretty much good. Oh, something has happened. Oh, we've finished militarism, so now we're gonna go military youth. And let's try a little attack, see what happens. We're winning, 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 losing. That's what I can deal with. Now, one of the reasons that I built a bunch of really tiny divisions is because Iran is a really big front line, and, you know, they have very few divisions, meaning that we're going to get to get encirclements. And it doesn't matter if your divisions suck. If you can surround other divisions and then attack them, you're going to win. It's like simple hoi foi rule. Alright, so obviously we're not breaking here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the game, and I'm going to reorganize the blue front line, so it's just here. We're going to hold everyone, and we're going to make it just this one tile, and we're going to pause your attack. Also, we're going to pause your attack too, so you just finish those, and then we can let the front line move up. And let everyone reorganize. Also, another problem that I've just realized is that... We are not producing any artillery, which is a very, very bad thing. We want to be producing artillery. Ooh, more military factories. Now, since... Oh, these have equal infrastructure. So we can just build them both, because it doesn't really matter. But we'll be able to continue. Anyways, so... Um, let's get everyone attacking. Can we break that? No, we can't. Alright, so we're just going to hold you then. Just hold. Everyone hold. Everyone reorganize. Reman the front lines. Let's get everything going good. All right, let's see the casualties. All right, still looking good. It's still a two to one death ratio. It is now 1% in the favor of us because we've killed so many of them. And we now have improved machine tools. So once we have that, we're going to, uh, let's see, what are we gonna do? We'll continue down our doctrine. So we have let everyone reorganize, and let's see if we can get another push. Let's take these three guys and see if we can do an encirclement. Yes, we can. All right, now we're going to take you, make you stay there, take just you guys, and do that. All right, we've done military youth, time for paramilitarism. Also, another thing, move up the front line for blue, so that we don't have all sorts of front line issues, and continue the attack. Also, another thing, pin these divisions. We don't want to let them escape. We want to kill them. Now, we're going to see if we can try and complete this encirclement here. Make you stay there, or you can move. I honestly, it doesn't seem to be mattering. And there are now three divisions there. So, what we're going to do is, instead of moving all those divisions there, we're going to just move this one here, pause you, and have you attack there, so that we pin you. And we'll see if we can encircle all of these divisions. Come on. Yes! Alright. This is amazing. So, we've encircled all of these divisions. We're going to continue the attack. Take one of you. And... See if this works. Support equipment two is now done. And do we want to get support equipment? Oh no, we need radio for the reinforced rate. Reinforced rate is really big in this game. It allows you to get more divisions and equipment and all that stuff to the front lines faster. Right, so look, there's two divisions left there. We've killed 52,000 of them. Let's see how many we kill in this little pocket. Ooh, okay. 
Oh, that was just 10,000 dead Iranians. Alright. So they have very few men left compared to us. And very few divisions, too. That'll be very easily encircled. Shorten the blue front line. To... Just, you know what? We'll just make a new front line. There we go. Draw the front line. And let everyone reorganize. Also, everyone railroad. Now, one of the amazing things about this right now is that we have so many more divisions than them. It doesn't matter that our divisions suck compared to them. We're going to be able to encircle them, and we're going to be able to occupy every portion of the front, which they're not going to be able to do in a little bit after we have advanced a little bit further. So now, because their divisions are better than ours, they're going to think that, oh, we're going to be able to attack. They're not. That is the case. All of our divisions are prepared. Let's see if we can get a little push in. Oh, we're green in lots of spaces. Green, 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 green. Everyone's green. Let's see where this guy goes. Could be better. What I might do is I might just have the blue guys try and go to Tehran. Just, you can shift click and it just finishes their attack order and then starts the next one immediately. And what I might do is, after they finish this attack order, I'm just going to delete the blue, f the blue front line and just let them go. I'm just gonna... just go. That's the plan. Alright, paramilitarism, ideological fanaticism. Which is pretty good. It gives us war support and division attack and defense of core territory, which since we've already pushed past our core territory, doesn't really matter. But it also allows us to create factions, which we're not gonna do any either. Alright, so really it's only giving us war support, but war support is so good. Alright, so we now have that, so we are going to... We still have 64,000 manpower. I guess we'll get the army defense guy. Probably wouldn't hurt. Alright, we've done computing machine. Now, 1939, so let's get better... Oh, no, we want industry. We want disperse support. So, also, another thing you want to watch out for is if there's... A, since we're sending all of these blue guys just to go, there's going to be holes in the front lines. So, you want to take some of your divisions and move them up behind the blue guys so that, you know, you don't get encircled and die. You know, because dying is bad. Okay, so, we're going to take this guy and make him go there. You guys just rest for a second. You have taken Tehran. You can go to there. And you can go up there. And then I'm going to have you go to Isfahan. And then Avaz. You are going down to Kerman. You go to Kerman. You go to Kerman. Everybody go to Kerman. And you guys can just... I don't know. Have fun. Just have fun up there. Kill stuff. You know the deal. So this is also sort of like a mini micromanaging guide. That doesn't matter because we hold this, so we still get supply. And pin that guy so that we can get into Bandar e Abbas. Yep, there we go. Now let's see, how close are they to capitulating? Getting close. Oh no. Uh... Can we see if we can railroad you? Actually, you know what? You railroad up there too. So also another thing, you can hover over the division and see how long until they move. So this is actually a pretty good division. So we're going to attack that guy to pin him. So you've taken, almost taken Tabritz. So the blue guy is going, you know it. You can probably go to Isahan and then Avaz. I'll let you railroad too. I wonder if railroads work in enemy terrain, like areas. Actually no, you don't do that. You just... You know what, you can be assigned to that front, and you can do that. Now, it doesn't matter that we don't have air superiority, because we have so many more divisions than them, that it does not matter. Oh, no. That's not good. Let's see if we can retake that. Alright, we can. So, we're just going to send you up and around, so that that guy up there can get his supply. 
because supply is very important in this game. You don't want to have no supply, that's bad. Just keep pinning. Also, at this point, we're almost done with this force, so we can begin justifying on... Alright, I guess we can't begin justifying on Afghanistan. Now, also, another thing is we want to... Are we about to capitulate them? Alright, we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just halt that guy so that we don't capitulate them. Because we want to be able to declare war, justify in Afghanistan before, you know, the whole, before we finish this war because it makes the justification faster. So we just need 15 more political power. How close are we? Kind of close. So we don't want to take any more victory points. You guys just keep attacking. Yeah, we did pretty good. Uh, are we almost there? Uh, okay, that guy's not moving in. That guy's not moving in. Oops, it appears that... Now, this guy is still okay, I think. How much more political power? Six. Just wait six more days then, and then we will have enough political power to justify on Afghanistan. How close are we now? Two more. No? Yes. Alright. So now we can finish this. Take Avaz. Take Mashad. Because I think we need that. You know what? You just go there. Oh, uh, what just happened? Oh, we did ideological fanaticism. All right, so now we do secret weapons, because that gives us a bunch of bonuses for electronics, nuclear technology, and rocketry, which is amazing. And you just go there. You just go there. All right, let's go. Oh, we've done a nice encirclement there, too. And please take it. And there we go. We have capitulated Iran. Take all states and turn done. Now take all of your divisions and put them. Oh, also we're going to do advanced machine tools and put them on the front line with Iran and take these three divisions, put them right here and make a spearhead for here. And if it doesn't work, just it all around because we want Baghdad to be in the spearhead good and also another thing is now we have an issue we have garrisons that we have to fulfill so we are going to make the suppression division I know it doesn't sound that great but it's gonna be great it is going to be literally A 20 with cavalry division. I know, so exciting. Now, the most optimal garrison division, in my opinion, this is not fact, this is just my opinion, is 14 cavalry, 4 armored cars, and military police. The reason is because cavalry have really good suppression, armored cars give your division, uh, your suppression units armor, which means that they suffer less damage from garrisons, and military police decrease the amount of equipment you need for garrisons and make your suppression easier. Now, we don't have armored cars, and we don't have military police, so we're just going to build cavalry. Now, the fatter your division for suppression, the more efficient it's going to be. So we are going to build as big a division as we can, reasonably, which is a 20th cavalry division. Now, we're going to go over to Occupy Territories, click on this little icon right here, and switch it to our cavalry template. Now look at this, we only need 2.36 divisions, which means that we don't really need that much garrison. We're going to set this to civilian oversight, which is good. Now, uh, because that is, I mean, that's relatively good. You could have originally do no garrison and that'll build up compliance, which actually I might do, but that'll increase, you know, resistance a lot. But at the beginning, Resistance doesn't affect you as much, so that's okay. But also another thing 
is since we now have five civilian factories, we are going to build a spy agency. You're going to see why in a little bit, and we're going to call it the Afghanistan Intelligence Agency, AIA, because why not? All right, I will be back with you once we everything is in place. All right, so while I was gone, I noticed that because there's a lot of resistance growth in Iran, because it's a very rebellious country, we're actually not building any compliance, except for the stuff that we already have. And our resistance is skyrocketing. So we're not going to stand no garrison. We are going to go back to civilian oversight, which means that we need 2.81 cavalry divisions. And we are going to get an operative. So I'm going to stick with you. I should do it. Maybe I'll do a little cut here, and I'll come right back once we have our operative. All right, so I am uh, back, and now we can recruit an operative. So let's see, escape artist, not useful, escape cracker, not useful, and... All right, so none of these are useful, so we're just gonna pick the one that we like the most. So I'm going to pick Kamran Abdul. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over and we're gonna click this root out resistance button. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're gonna see any areas that have this little icon here that says organized resistance and we're going to place him right there what that's going to do is he is going to be actively reducing resistance growth which is very useful also another thing that we're going to do is once our next research is done we're going to start researching support equipment so that as i said earlier we can get oh, lots of stuff happening we can get military police now we've finished secret weapons, we are going to go down army effort. Also another thing is I'm building more divisions, infinitely div building more militia, passively producing more royal guard. Also another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the militia division to 10 combat width. Just a little bit more effective than 8 combat width. Because of the way attack things work, where the maximum amount of division combat width that you could have theoretically is 80 width and so you want to have numbers for your combat width that are divisible by 80 so you either want 10 20 or 40 40 is the most effective then 20 and then 10 however like general traits and stuff can affect that but basically you want to either build 10 20 or 40 combat width divisions they are the most effective unless you know certain stuff like Theoretically, 10 can also be the most effective because you can get a bunch of support equipment stacking because then you have more divisions with more support equipment. But then if you're a minor nation, you don't have the production capability to produce all of the support equipment, which is another issue. But I digress. Build 10 combat widths for your militia, 20 combat widths for your front line main attack divisions. Right, we have just finished our first dispersed industry three. So we are going to be researching support equipment. All right, so we have now finished army effort. Oh, oops, hit the pause button. World War II has begun. I know, exciting. We're now going to do this next doctrine effort. While you, while I was, uh, you know, in cut, I did a, painted a giant arrow over Iraq with this guy. Our divisions are almost done training here. Uh, has anything else happened? I don't think so. World War II is just starting. Afghanistan has not been guaranteed by anybody. I mean, Iraq hasn't been guaranteed by anybody because they're just a little old Iraq. They've done liberty, I feel so. And we still have another 120 days until they're done. We're not going to accept any docking rights or anything from the Axis. Oh, we also have some political power, though, which we are going to use to get to limited conscription. We have finished advanced research tools, so we're going to do construction effort. I have researched support equipment. We are going to go... Um, actually, for this playthrough, I'm going to go disperse support instead of integrated support. And here's why. Normally, when I play a, play, a normal playthrough, I always go integrated support for... Uh, superior firepower doctrine simply because I love support equipment. It is my favorite thing. I love to just make like basic infantry divisions and stack them with support equipment, then get integrated support, and you get stacking modifiers on all of your support equipment. 
However, in this playthrough, the only support equipment that I'm using that I think I did this off camera is that I added support artillery to our main attack division and we're going to be using military police in our garrison division. So we're not really using support equipment, but we do have line artillery, as you can see here. Like, so this is what line means, basically. Whenever it says leg or line, that basically means it's a unit like this. So what we are going to do is we are going to do disperse support. Alright. Now, we have also done support equipment, so we're going to research military police. Also, in preparation, start producing a little bit of support equipment. Okay, we have finished doctrine effort. Going to do doctrine effort two. Okay, I'm back. We have finished our justification on Iraq. We've built a few more divisions. As you can see here, we now have 27. 154,000 manpower in the field. Time to declare war. So, we're going to simply just activate the orders and watch the Afghan- uh, The Iraqis melt before our eyes. It is officially January of 1940. The Allies are beginning to crumble. Denmark is sadly going to fall, and, well, nothing's new. This is an historical game. Or would it be a historical game? English. English. Uh, let's get some more guns. We're currently producing support equipment in preparation for... Oh, we finished Dr. Jeffrey 2, so we can now do... You know what? Let's get some nukes. In preparation for, you know, putting the... Support equipment into our cavalry. How many divisions? How many? Oh, we've lost exactly equivalent. That's kind of funny. Um, what we can do is we can do a little bit of micromanagement. Take you two, go up there. Take you two and go down there. And take you two and go there. Get that all over and done with. And let's see what this. Ha let's see what happens. We are currently building compliance in, F in Iran, which means that enemy operative detection, ch detective detection chance offset increases, which is pretty good. Resistance, oh, it's increasing again. Oh, because we don't have enough equipment. Well, we'll soon have enough equipment. Um, our operative is doing fine work, and we are pushing through Iraq. slowly because the whole world's on fire so everything goes slowly when the world is on fire as everyone knows right what what is going on here you two should be going up to Mosul and you should be going there and then down to Basra Finland accepts Soviet demands oh pause for a second uh, no nope, yet they're gonna plug the gaps now all of these guys are surrounded. I actually want to take like everyone down here and just everyone do that. And you're going down there. Good, good. Take you guys. Yep. Good. We've taken Mosul. We've done construction three. We can now get more infantry, new infantry guys, build more equipment, and We can probably kill all of these guys now. Oh, he's been wounded. Because when you're in the desert, you get wounded easier. Uh, what can we do? Probably we can go to free trade. Gives us more factory output. And we have very little use for oil, so, you know. Actually, you know, let's get another support equipment going, because now we have military police. And we're going to pop those into our cavalry. And as you can see, defense increases. Heart attack and soft attack increases. Suppression increases. And HP increases. Basically, better division. Another thing that we can also see is now we only need... Oh, actually, we need more. So we only need about, like, four and a half divisions for everything, which is pretty nice. Uh, we will also go for military police, too, because, you know, suppression bonus is always good. Why are we losing? What is happening here? Oh, the fall of Paris. France is 
you ritualated. Want everyone to stand still while we do all this fun, happy, go lucky stuff. You know, your usual stuff. Send you to go there, to go there. You get down there. Uh, you know what? Let's just get all of these guys and tell them to go to Basra. Actually, we can probably get you to go to Basra too. Oh no, those guys have broken. What are you guys doing? That's a problem. Uh, can we get you to attack railroad? Alright, so we're going to have you go there and then go there. Okay. <gasps> yes, alright, so we've capitulated Iraq. We're going to take all states and turn. Done. And there you have it. The new Afghan Khanate. We have one more division in training. It'll be done shortly. We have not too many resources, so we're going to have to trade for more of those. France no longer exists, so we can no longer use them. We have a fair few convoys, 21 factories, a fair bit of manpower. Soon to increase as long once we've built up enough compliance, because as you build compliance, you get more recruitable population. We are working on okay, resistance is increasing. We were trying to work on resistance, now it's increasing again. We have a very sizable army. We have a fair bit of research. You have a bunch of routes that you could go down now. You could switch out your fascist demagogue for a communist revolutionary, join the Soviets, do all that fun stuff. You could definitely invade Turkey, pr try and form the, Af uh, the Persian Empire. You could join the Axis if you wanted to because you're fascist and backstab or just attack the Soviet Union from below, expose the belly, but then of course you're at war with the Allies, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. But you have a bunch of options. You have a bunch of oil. Once you take out Turkey, you have a bunch of chromium. So once you're on free trade, you'll have tons of civilian factories. You're in a fairly decent spot right now. So, we have finished the Afghanistan thing. We finished episode one of this epically long series that will hopefully not take forever. Alright, so now that you have made it hopefully to the end of the video, I would like you to stay in tube for the next one, which will either be coming out sometime between tomorrow and the end of the universe. Uh, I'd like you to go and watch our other series on the YouTube channel, where me and three of my friends are playing uh, the Commonwealth of Nations, so Canada, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand, but there's a twist that you will have to watch to find out. And we also have a Twitch channel that you can go over and um, join us in the discussions over there. Well, anyways, it's goodbye from me. I'll catch you later.